Well, hi there. I'm working on a portrait here today because recently we had a guest on and he really inspired me to get out the paints and paint someone that I know. If you ever wanted to paint someone you know but you just weren't quite sure how to start or maybe you just have trouble with certain subjects. Like painting the eyes can be a problem or the teeth or getting realistic skin tones. Well if so, you're in luck because today's guest, yes, he's a master at painting people in portraits. And he was nice enough to come by and discuss and demonstrate how he does all this. So today's guest instructor is portrait artist Michael Challich. We all know that painting a portrait could be a bit more tricky than painting anything you want yourself. So before we get started with any demonstrations, we asked Michael if he could stop by and answer a few questions about how he prepares for this. Now here we are with Michael Challich and we're going to talk to him a little bit. We'll get to see him do an actual demo in a few minutes, but uh, just some background information that might be helpful for us out here to learn how he got where he is today. He's a very successful artist and he paints all kinds of subjects which we're going to show, but he is really a master at painting people and portraits, so that's why he's on today's show. How are you doing, Michael? Very good. Thank you. Now, uh, let's start at the very beginning. This really kind of a quick uh, background. Now, you went to art school. You didn't, you're not just self-taught. And what type of school was this where you got your training? I went to the American Academy of Art for two years in Chicago and then another four years in Minneapolis, Minnesota at a place called Atelier Lack. It was run by a man named Richard Lack who uh, his dad, the reason for having the school was to revive the methods of drawing and painting that, that you know, was handed down to him. Okay. Uh, it's a training that was started uh, perhaps back in the 18th century by a painter named Jacques-Louis David and uh, it was handed down from generation to generation and so it was a very traditional type of approach to drawing and painting. So uh, you knew kind of ahead of time what type of school they, they do and what kind of work you'll probably be influenced by by going there. So that's a good point. Uh, you don't want to uh, just enroll into a school and maybe just worry about tuition and location and things like that. See what their teachers work are, right? Because right. they're going to be teaching you and more likely they're going to you know, influence how you paint. Now, uh, as far as uh, portraits, is there ever any problems with dealing with a client? Where, I mean, they get to see your work ahead of time, so they right. really have a good idea, right? Right, what's going to evolve. What I've tried to do uh, over the years, to, just through experience, is uh, make sure that I get a final photograph of the face uh, that both the client and I agree upon. Okay. Uh, and with that, um, that, that secures, you know, that I'll be able to get a good likeness, you know, if I get a good photograph of the person. And I'm also supplementing that with uh, doing pastel studies, which I do from life. Okay. I'll have the sitter come and sit, you know, for the portrait under natural light conditions. And then I spend uh, about four or five sessions with the client uh, developing that pastel sketch. And on the final painting, I'll literally have the photograph on one side taped to the painting and then the pastel study on the other side taped to the painting mm. and then in the middle is the actual place where I'm painting, the can uh, painting on the canvas and I mm. use both uh, as reference. The color you know, from, from nature okay. is much more vivid and lifelike and you know, beautiful than what I can obtain from the photograph. So that's a lot more involved. It's almost like doing two paintings but I guess the pastel goes a lot faster than Much the faster. Painting. Yeah, if I'm doing it from life, absolutely. Okay, so there's more work involved but it, the quality ends up being much better and remember, I, we, we're always stressing, uh, photos aren't, you know, the, the true thing that you see in real life. Don't use them uh, as an exact reference. Okay. And this is an example here where I've got a photograph and then I'll put a piece of acetate, clear acetate, which you can buy in a roll, and I just do a painting, an oil painting, right on top of huh. uh, the acetate. Um, and I try out my composition however, you know, I think it's going to look best. And if I want to do something different with the color, this is kind of a, a purplish color, uh -huh. then I'll try wow. a different kind of yellowish color here instead if I like that. So doing all these things, it's not just for professionals. I mean, we're doing this to save work, save time, right. save problems. So really think about that 
when you're doing any kind of preparation for paintings instead of just going right at it. You know, we're, we're trying to make things easier by doing all these things. Well, those are some great tips. And now, uh, just really quickly, so you basically get together with them, you go over some photos with them, you do uh, a pastel of them, and then you get to the final painting. Right. So that's where we're going to go to right now. We're going to actually see Michael in action and get to see him work on a, a sample of a painting. Uh, so we're going to go to your studio, right? Very good. Okay, we're going to go there right now. So here we are at Michael's studio, and he has a, a painting already started here for us. And uh, can you tell us about this painting? Was this another example of what we were talking about? Yes, yeah, this is a uh, commission of uh, Purdue University North Central um, Chancellor Dworkin, uh, he's a chancellor, okay. and um, I've already started washing in the background and have established the uh, suit, first layer of paint, uh, in, in thicker paint. So I've got the rest of the, the painting to fill out, and we'll be spending uh, this demonstration working on uh, the portrait itself. Face, okay. Mm -hmm. And notice that we have uh, a person without a head or feet, <laughs> like a mannequin of the suit. So in a way, you have the model here for the clothes. Right. And you did uh, a, a preliminary like drawing or painting at a different location of the? That's correct. Um, in working with the, with the sitter, with Chancellor Dworkin, I went to Purdue University North Central, looked for an ideal lighting condition, uh, which was natural light, and then set uh, both him up in my easel and did a pastel uh, portrait of the chancellor. Uh, I would like to work from natural light because it allows me a fuller spectrum of colors, richer color. Okay. And, um, and I spent about uh, three to five sessions uh, developing that. Here. I will have a photo up here also. The photo helps me with the drawing, you know, getting all the shapes and angles of the face correct. Okay. Uh, the pastel itself will, will have to do with getting the coloring right. All right, well, there we go. Now we're going to continue on from here, and we'll start developing this face and see how Michael does his work, his masterpieces. Okay, I'll get out of your way here, and we can continue. Okay.